Greetings! I am Herbert Erpadurp, and today I'm going to be assembling these Ewar 28mm scale pre-cut foamed PVC structures by Plest Craft Games. I have the warehouse and grocery store. They do have three more buildings available in this scale, but I figured I would test the proverbial waters with just two. The back of the boxes have a picture that can be helpful during assembly, and a diagram showing the sizes of the buildings. They also let us know that the model is unpainted and unassembled, as if the size of the box didn't give it away. It also tells us that the instructions can be found on their website. I will link the PDFs in the description. You can also follow the QR code on the box to get the instructions, which I think is an interesting touch. The reason the box has this information is obviously because there are no instructions included inside the box itself. What is inside the box is a bunch of very white plastic. It's pretty well detailed with some nice brick pattern. Unfortunately, the camera doesn't really pick it up very well owing to just how white it is. I'm going to start with the warehouse. The first thing I did was to glue the plastic window sheets onto their frames. Do this carefully so that none of the white is visible through the window. There is a correct way around to place these windows. You can hold it up so that your light reflects off the plastic. The grey window frames are matte and will not reflect the light on the side that should be facing outwards. It looks decent, but gluing these in now would make painting much harder, so I'm not going to do that just yet. They should be pretty easy to install once the warehouse is completed and painted. Speaking of gluing things in, the website suggests using super glue for these models. I didn't notice that at first and used regular plastic glue. It does seem to bond the parts well enough though. Next, I assemble the end walls. This is quite a simple process of gluing the doors on, and then the cover for the rail thing that the door slides along. If you want to be sure you have the door on straight, you can hold the wall upright, flat against your work surface. The other wall is similar to the first, only the doors are bigger. I like how they've done this, allowing you to have the doors as open or closed as you like. The next thing I did was to put all the walls together. This isn't particularly difficult, though because of the size of the model, I did find it a little bit cumbersome. Super glue would work great here because of how quickly it sets, but you might not get the chance to make any adjustments. You might find some weights and things with straight edges useful here. I wish I had thought of that before starting. The wall parts don't really need any cleanup like other plastic models do. These have no mold lines and they fit together very well, though not absolutely perfectly. You might find that some parts have slight bends, but the material is flexible enough for that not to be a big issue. Issue. You can bend it back into shape quite easily. Next, I assemble the rafters for the roof. You just have to pop out the triangle sections and then remove the joiner plate shapes from the center of each triangle. Glue them to the rafter parts like so. This rafter part is for the center of the structure and the extra pieces should be glued to either side. This is the end rafter, and in order for it to fit against the wall, it only has the joiner plate things glued to one side. Of course, if you don't plan to make the model's roof removable, you could easily get away without adding any of the joiner plates as they won't be particularly visible anyway. Next, the rafters are glued into place. This step is simple enough. There are two of these end pieces without the raised part on top, and two central pieces with the raised part. Then I glue these two small roof pieces together like so. I put one of the large main roof pieces on to hold the central rafters the correct distance apart, and then I glued the small rooftop on trying to get it positioned as close to centre as possible. That's about all there is to this model. You could add various odds and ends to the inside to add some interest, which I very well might do, but for now I will call it complete. The intention is that the two roof panels will simply sit in place atop the building, but that doesn't seem to be the case. I'm going to have to come up with some way to hold the roof in place, possibly magnets. Now to start on the grocery. This also has plastic windows included. These don't have frames to glue them to, so I will just put them aside until the painting is complete. Start by gluing the internal wall to the second story floor. I then glue the small walls that go around the opening into which the stairs will eventually go. While I was waiting for the glue to set on that, I glued the door into place on the front wall. In hindsight, leaving this off to paint separately would make things a bit easier. I then glue the floor assembly to the walls. The pieces slot together fairly nicely, though not entirely perfectly. The corners do look a bit rough, but I think it works well with the interlocked block style corners this building has. Or whatever you would call that. At this stage, I only glue on three of the walls in order to allow myself access to install the stairs. The instructions suggest assembling these as a separate piece to glue into the structure later, but that seems like it would be really tricky and frustrating. So I glued one of the stair stringers to the wall, then I glued the other stringer to the floor. To keep this stable while the glue dried, I attached some blue tack to the part. Next, I glued in the step treads. I'm not entirely sure how visible these will be from the outside of the building through the windows, but I think it's a nice detail. The floor and steps have some nice wood grain molded in which should look great when it's painted. Then I attached the final wall. I then added this angled piece as a railing on the small wall above the stairway. This could be omitted, it won't really be visible from the outside at all, but I think it's a nice touch. We do need something to support the roof. 
There are two of these angled rafter pieces. Glue them in place, being careful to get them centered with the peaks on the walls. The roof, like the one on the warehouse, is made of two sheets of tiles. One of them has a rectangle marked onto the back onto which this plain sheet of plastic is glued. This is the half of the roof that is left unattached. The other piece can be glued on. Make sure the edge of the roof part lines up with the support piece like I've done here. The other half of the roof can then simply sit in place. This is something I quite like with this model. You don't glue the floor on, instead you glue these jagged pieces onto the floor. They correspond with the window openings, so be sure to glue them in the correct order as the instructions show. The result is a nice removable floor that can be used to represent a destroyed building. You know, in case you happen to drive a tank through it or something. Or you could use it separately from the main structure to get a little bit more scenery bang for your buck. I think it's a great idea, and the entire building goes together very nicely. It does unfortunately look a little bit sparse inside. I might have to build some odds and ends to put inside this building as well as the warehouse. At least for this building, the roof stays on. It also comes with a piece of plastic to make a sign out of. I'll leave this off until I paint the building. So that's both of these structures completed. Let's have a quick look at the scale of these models. I'm using this 28mm Stug by Rubicon as an example. The only 28mm scale figures that I have are in the middle of being painted. Otherwise, I'd use them for a comparison also. I am by no means an expert when it comes to things like accurate scale but it looks to me as though these buildings are quite close to the correct size, if maybe a little bit on the big side. You can easily hide a vehicle like this behind these structures. You can also place a vehicle inside the warehouse like so. I don't know if there are any rules in bolt action relating to this kind of thing, but I think it looks cool. The warehouse does seem like a very tall building, but I guess that's realistic enough. I'm satisfied with the scaling of these models, and indeed I am satisfied with the kits overall. They were fairly easy to build and didn't take very long to complete. As the instructions suggest, I would use super glue for these if only to bond the pieces together quicker. As I said though, plastic cement has worked well enough for me. If I have one complaint about these models, it would be that some of the parts were bent. Mostly the larger pieces, and not too badly, but enough to be a little bit annoying. Fortunately, the material is soft and flexible enough that you can easily straighten it. I quite like the ability to remove the roofs, though not gluing the roof onto the warehouse does make it look a bit crappy. I will come up with a solution for that one day. I particularly like the removable floor on the grocery store. These models are obviously not super high detailed show pieces, but I think they're going to look pretty nice when they're all painted up. Adding some extra bits and pieces, particularly boxes and junk inside the warehouse, will make them look even better. They'll look great on the gaming table. These models are a good, slightly cheaper alternative to the MDF offerings from companies such as Foregrounds, which are quite good in their own right. It's always nice to have options. Plastcraft games also make similar structures in 15mm scale. I will get around to checking those out someday. I would imagine they're just as good as these 28mm versions. So far, these are the only 28mm scale scenery items that I have, but I do plan to purchase the other three buildings Plastcraft games offer in this scale. What do you think of these kits? Have you built one yourself? I'd love to see any comments in the comment section below, or on Facebook or Twitter if you're inclined to use those. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for watching. Farewell.